Hi everybody, it's Laura from Green Tree. I am doing the video outside again today because it's beautiful out and why not? Um, if you read the description, today we're talking about compound salads. We might have some background noise um, because there's actually a car show going on downtown right now. So you can hear some of the engines. There's a lot of real classic cars that I can see from right where I'm sitting. Um, but there's also a lot of background noise in the store and you guys usually bear with me. So I figured it was worth giving it a shot. Oh no. <laughs> and the air conditioning just came on too. If you have any trouble hearing me, just let me know and I'll try to speak up. Um, but yeah, today we're talking about compound salads. Compound salads are great for the summer, which even though it's not technically summer yet, if any of you have been outside today, you know it feels like summer. Uh, but they are great for this kind of weather because they don't involve a lot of cooking. Sometimes there's a little bit of pre-cooking of one or more of the ingredients, but the whole dish itself does not have to be cooked and it can be served cold, which again is great when it starts to get hot out. Now, first let's start by what is a compound salad? So if you're not sure, let me show you right here. This is an example of a compound salad that our deli makes. You can see that this salad contains a mixture of corn and beans and little red peppers, um, different kinds of chopped herbs. So a compound salad is any salad that is compounded or composed of a variety of different ingredients other than your traditional green salad kind of lettuce, kale, spinach type mix. So you can put a lot of different things in a compound salad. Another example would be our curry chicken salad, which you can see is like a creamy salad. Um, this has a lot of meats in it. Usually these compound salads are not dessert type things. Um, but a fruit salad would be considered a compound salad. So would something like ambrosia, um, which many people have had. It's got like the little marshmallows and nuts and grapes and all that kind of good stuff in it. And that would be a compound salad too. So it's something where all of the ingredients are tossed together. Oops, sorry, I almost dropped something. <laughs> where all the ingredients are tossed together in a dressing, um, but you can really put almost anything you like in the salad. So I'm just going to give you kind of a breakdown of the things you might mix and match to make your own compound salads at home. Now first off, you're going to need some kind of a base to it. Uh, a lot of people like to use different kinds of beans. Beans are great because they're going to add a lot of protein right off the bat to your salad. They're going to make it more filling and it's going to be vegetarian to start. Now there are lots of compound salads that do contain meat or other animal products but they don't have to, and this is a really solid cold protein that you can use. When you buy the beans pre-cooked, you don't even have to run them in the slow cooker beforehand. Um, you can just go ahead, open this can, drain it, and you have got the base of your salad ready to go. Another nice base for a compound salad is a grain like rice or something sprouted like quinoa. So when you get like a nice sprouted quinoa like this, it's got these lovely little multicolored seeds in it. It's going to make your salad look pretty. And again, this is a nice way to add protein and fiber to your salad. It's going to require minimal cooking. So you can just make this ahead of time, kind of a big batch of it, stick it in the fridge until it's cold, and then that can be the base for your salad. You're also going to want to add flavor to your salad um, with some kind of fun little add-in. So once you've decided on your base, whether that is, sorry, a truck just went by, <laughs> um, whether that base is, is a grain or beans or some kind of chopped vegetable like in our broccoli salad, I'll show you this little guy. So this is really good. This one is um, broccoli and dressing. Here, let me see if you can see it better this way around. It's like broccoli and dressing, nuts, little bits of fruits. Um, but the broccoli is the base in this salad. So you got your cold salad and now you need to add your flavor. Something you could do if you want a little zip to your salad is like these lovely pickled peppers. Um, these are hot peppers that you can chop and throw in there. You could also use say roasted red peppers would be something really tasty. Um, other things that people will add to add a salty kick, olives. Olives are a great addition to a cold salad. This would work well if you want to make some kind of antipasta salad where you're taking like 
chopped maybe pepperoni or even summer sausage with some olives, some cheese, fresh tomatoes. That makes a nice little side dish as well. Um, but adding some kind of salty kick like this is a really good addition to a salad. Hi Katie, I just got a wave. <laughs> Another thing that you could add, and I really love adding these, sun-dried tomatoes. Sun-dried tomatoes, and you can see the light kind of shining through these nicely here, are cool because they have a little natural oil on them. You don't have to add extra oil to the salad when you chop these and put them in. And every time you get a bite of one, it's like a real pop of flavor. This works well in a cold meat-based salad or a veggie salad. So let's say you took those garbanzo beans that I showed earlier, you added some of these uh, chopped uh, sun-dried tomatoes to it, you got a really nice burst of flavor there, and now maybe you're going to add, say, some chopped hard-boiled eggs or some fresh sweet corn, and then you could add something else like, oh, cucumber is great in these kinds of salads, maybe crumble in a little feta, and you just kind of look and say, what do I have in my fridge right now that is cold, <laughs> relatively good for me, and I'm going to toss those things together. Um, I did mention cucumber. Fresh veggies are a really great addition to compound salads because you can take these, you can leave the skin on for a more intense texture. You can go ahead and strip it off and take out the seeds if you want like a light crunch. You can get the similar effect from raw onions, but again, if you use raw onions, you're gonna have more of a flavor punch. So just kind of go through your fridge and say, what do I like, you know, what's good raw? And take and chop those things throw them all together in one dish, and that's where your salad is gonna really start coming together. Um, like I said, cucumbers are great, raw onions are great, broccoli works really well, really whatever you have. You can also add dried fruit, like dried cranberries or chopped uh, walnuts is really nice in a cold salad. And this will work in a salad that's savory as well. I know I showed you our curry chicken salad earlier but this one I don't know if you can see on the video oh here we go so you can see like we actually have dried cranberries in this chicken salad so it's a creamy savory salad but with this addition of these little uh, dried cranberries similar to the sun-dried tomatoes you're gonna get just a little burst of more intense flavor in every couple of bites and it adds a lot of character to the salad that you're not gonna get if you're just using the plain kind of bland ingredients Oh, thanks Joyce, I appreciate that. I'm glad you're enjoying it. <laughs> Hi Courtney. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just waving to everybody as you guys pop in and out. So, now we have got kind of some of the basic flavor components you can add. Oh, you can also throw nuts in your salad, like toasted almonds, big chunks of walnuts, um, anything that you kind of enjoy that's gonna add that little unctuous, fatty kind of thing to the salad. Hemp seeds also work great for that. I don't really recommend chia seeds in a compound salad though because you're just going to end up with them all stuck in your teeth um, and the slippery texture doesn't always work well with the other types of ingredients that you're going to use. So now let's say you've got your blend. You've got some kind of a base, whether it's beans or grains um, or veggies. You've got some extra little flavor enhancers like your sun-dried tomatoes, your dried cranberries, banana peppers, whatever suits your fancy. Now what you need is a dressing. So I'm gonna say there are a lot of different ways you can go with the dressing and it's gonna depend quite a bit on what the ingredients in the salad are, what dressing is going to taste the best. Some really common bases are mayo, just straight up mayo. This one's an avocado mayo. You could use like a classic, um, you know, Hellman's, Woodstock, whatever you happen to have in the cupboard. Um, you can also just use your favorite salad dressing and that would work just fine. Another thing that works really well to create a dressing for a compound salad is a nice cooking vinegar. Um, this is a red wine vinegar. Apple cider vinegar will work well. If you have any of the flavored vinegars that you can get, that's gonna add like extra character into the dish. Vinegar is nice because it's a good tangy flavor. Actually, here's a, a compound salad that I really like to make. I will take and chop a bunch of fruit, um, whatever kind you like, whatever you've got on hand. Mix in a little bit of shredded coconut and some either toasted almonds or chunks of walnuts, whatever you have. And then you're gonna go ahead and actually use for your dressing balsamic vinegar and vanilla extract. It might sound a little weird, but it's a really nice flavor combination. 
I'm sorry, I'm in like a weird spot here, right? I'm squinting at you guys. There we go, that is way better. <laughs> sorry about that. Um, so balsamic vinegar and uh, vanilla extract. I would say probably like for every two tablespoons of balsamic vinegar, maybe a teaspoon of vanilla extract and toss your fruit in that. It's gonna give you a more complex flavor because it's got that tangy intensity from the vinegar, but the vanilla is gonna make all of those fruit flavors really come to the top. And that's a great combination that you could have in your lunch, you could serve it as a side dish, or you could have it as kind of a lighter dessert at a barbecue. Um, for the people that like things a little sweeter, you can throw a little bit of Cool Whip on top. For the people that just really want that little hit of flavor, you can serve it in a nice little side cup. Um, but then again, because of the nuts, it does add a little more nutrition and, and I like it for lunch. Um, another popular dressing you can do is a mustard-based dressing. This actually is kind of an interesting hybrid. I know I mentioned this again, but like the something like the curry chicken salad where you're taking and mixing mayo and mustard, you can make a really nice creamy dressing that still has some tanginess to it. That also works well for a potato salad, which is a compound salad. Um, oh, and I didn't mention potatoes before, but uh, potatoes and sweet potatoes both make an excellent base for this kind of salad. I mean, it's really whatever you have in your cupboard that you like the flavors together, you can mix those in any way that you like. So, I've kind of gone over some of the things you can put into your salads. Um, the one I didn't mention is you can do pasta. At a certain point, it becomes a pasta salad when it's more pasta than uh, other fillings. But it's a fine line, throwing a little extra pasta into your salad as you go um, is a nice way to add a little bit of carbs for that, um, you know, if you need that little bit of sugar kind of thing in there <laughs> without actually having the sweets. It's something that's going to make you feel a little fuller for a bit and um, honestly, I like pasta. So sometimes you can throw pasta into your compound salads too. But finally, um, I'm just gonna give you a little bit of a breakdown on approximate proportions. Now, I don't usually measure when I'm making a compound salad. I just kind of take what I have and throw it in there. But let's say you want to have a bit of a guideline for, let's, two to four people. It would be two people if you're making this as a dinner, um, four if you're making it as kind of a side. I would say you probably want to start with about three cups of whatever your base is, um, whether that is your grains or your beans or your pasta, your big chopped veggies like potatoes or sweet potatoes. You want about three cups of that. That's going to give you the bulk of your salad. And then you probably want to have at least a cup of some kind of interesting crunchy chopped veggies or other type of protein like eggs that's going to give you some additional bulk and additional flavor and then a good half to quarter cup depending on how intense it is of some kind of flavor enhancers like your different chopped um, sun-dried tomatoes dried fruits nuts like a mixture of those things those those things that are going to make the flavor pop crumbled feta um, would work well in this situation too. So you want at least like a half cup of those flavor bonus items. And then for that whole thing, I would start with something around a tablespoon to a tablespoon and a half of whatever your dressing is gonna be per serving. So if you were making a batch about the size that I'm talking about, I'd probably start with two to three tablespoons of whatever kind of dressing you wanna use. Stir the whole thing up, check the texture. If you want it a little creamier, a little heavier on the dressing, go ahead and add it in then. And then when you've got that all put together, you can throw in your chopped fresh herbs, um, your salt and pepper, any kind of seasonings you wanted to add, like curry powder or taco seasoning, um, harissa paste, any of those extra final flavor enhancers, you can toss them in, taste as you go, and when you get it how you want, boom, compound salad. Um, that's a, like I said, great side dish, great cold dinner. You can make these ahead. They go well to barbecues. They pack well in lunches. Um, if it's a short trip, you can even take them, you know, backpacking or camping. Um, if you're going to be longer, obviously you're going to have to keep it cold, but they pack well, they're easy to eat. They don't heat up your kitchen. So if you haven't ever made a compound salad, I really suggest it. Um, oh, thanks Katie. I'm glad you like the ideas and tell us what you come up with. 
Um, there's a lot of recipes out there in the world, but I honestly recommend go to your fridge, go to your cabinet, say, what do I have that I need to use up without heating it up? And just kind of throw it all together into something delicious. So I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you get to try out making some of these salads yourself. And I hope you guys have an absolutely wonderful weekend. Bye guys, happy Friday.